Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Now it's uh, two o'clock uh, p.m. Um, two minutes past, which means that we can slowly start our uh, virtual event. So this is the first day of uh, our three uh, afternoons run of um, the virtual Who is Who uh, event. Uh, so thank you very much for being with us. Um, so today, here I here we are, uh, Kasia and Taviana. We are uh, the virtual uh, event moderators. We will be guiding you throughout the presentations of today and the next uh, two afternoons. Feel free to ask us any questions during the virtual event. We are here to assist you and assist the speakers in the best way we can. As most of us uh, works from home um, because of yeah, what's happening now uh, in the world, we would like to thank you in advance for your flexibility and understanding because um, there might be a possibility we could struggle a bit with time constraints or minor technical issues. So if we go a little bit over the time scheduled uh, previously or if we have to modify the speaker's order due to sudden problems, please stay with us and bear with us. To continue, what's uh, the objective of this event? Well, with today's event, we wanted to encourage our community to stay connected, despite the challenging times we all have to go through this year. We know that nothing can replace the physical events and we all miss them very much. But we thought that by launching this online event, we will help the community to continue effective collaboration and give possibility Two, leading solution providers to introduce their products and services in the public safety sector and also give possibility to emergency services and public authorities to keep track on innovative solutions that could help improve the quality of emergency response. The program of today's virtual event is um, well, composed of three consecutive afternoons uh, from 2 till 5 p.m. today and tomorrow from 2 till 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Each day has presenting blocks, each of five presentations. We wanted you to come and join valuable and interesting presentations for you. So th this is why, as you can see in the program, visible here on the slide as well as in the um, on the web page you will not see the presenter's name over there but just the name of the company and the tags indicating areas of that company's expertise if you would like to read more and discover companies' profiles links in the program will take you to ina's online who is who directory a newly developed website which will present you in a very interactive way what are the companies in the sector and what solutions they provide the connection link of today that you use to connect today is valid for all three afternoons. So feel free to join us tomorrow and on Wednesday. Today, we have 15 presentations, each of 10 minutes, divided into three blocks. We will allow two breaks in between. We will stay connected, however, so um, please feel free to join us quickly afterwards. We will indicate the time of the official start of the second block. During each presentation, don't hesitate to ask questions. Write them in the chat window that you can see in the control panel of the GoToWebinar dashboard. Those questions are only visible to us moderators and will be forwarded to the presenters. As the time is short, the presenters might, but is not obliged to answer them all. So if you see that your question stayed open, feel free to contact the presenter individually after the event. Their contact details will be displayed in their presentations. Presentations, however, from today and from tomorrow and on Wednesday will not be published on our event webpage, neither they will be distrib distributed in the participants to the participants afterwards. But the recording of each afternoon will be posted on the event webpage and also in a YouTube channel the next morning. So the recording of today's event you will be easy will be easily accessible tomorrow in the morning before a little bit before the afternoon. So now uh, it's officially 2.07 and I think that it's a little bit uh, on time, a little bit in front of the time, but I think we can already start with the first presentation of Everbridge. Knut, the floor is yours. Your presentation 
of 10 minutes will start as soon as you will start your speech. The floor is yours. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Knut Dierde. I am the CTO of Public Warning in Everbridge. Uh, and I'm responsible for uh, product management and global rollout and delivery of our public warning system. Uh, first, I just want to briefly say something about Everbridge. Uh, we are the global uh, leader of uh, critical event management with more than 5,000 organizations using our system for uh, critical event lifecycle management. Uh, we have also uh, more than 500 government customers, uh, government, uh, local, state, and, uh, and municipalities using our public warning functionality. And we also have more than 10 national public warning uh, system deployments worldwide. So I will uh, talk about Everbridge's public warning uh, offering in today's brief presentation. Uh, this diagram shows uh, our system, our overall offering within the public warning area and national public warning. Um, and we have a highly modular uh, offering uh, in this area where we have both the telecom uh, channels, uh, which you see here at the bottom in, uh, in red, uh, covering cell broadcast with our one to many uh, cell broadcast technology. One to many uh, joined uh, Everbridge uh, in the beginning of this year and became a full, fully integrated uh, system and team within Everbridge uh, at that point. Lutz, if I can just disturb you for a second, we have some um, problem because we see um, the dashboard of GoToWebinar because you are sharing maybe the screens, but if you can just close it. Okay. Thank you. It's yeah, all sure. solved now. Um, then I think I have to move this uh, so I can see my own screen. Okay, so uh, good. Um, so then uh, the next uh, important part of, the, uh, of our offering is the location-based SMS uh, solution, which is also a fully uh, in-house uh, technology uh, provided by Everbridge. So Everbridge location-based SMS. And the third part is the secondary channels, uh, additional uh, channels, alerting channels that we support within this platform, along with the two main channels, cell broadcast and location-based SMS. And then on top of that, we offer uh, our public warning center, uh, which is the part that typically is installed with the government side or authorities for uh, orchestration and dis dissemination of alerts through these various channels. Um, so our public warning uh, offering, it takes uh, sort of several steps beyond the EU directive uh, and the mandates that we, we now know will need to be implemented by June 2022. Uh, the Everbridge public warning platform uh, offers uh, a range of capabilities uh, that sort of adds on that, that uh, EU directive scope. Uh, we offer a fully fledged uh, alerting front end and a gateway that uh, supports uh, APIs for integration of third parties and existing uh, legacy systems. Uh, it has a uh, intuitive graphical interface with where mapping, of course, is, is an important part of that. Uh, it has uh, an important capability, which we call critical event lifecycle management, which means that it's not just for alerting, but it's also for actually planning uh, critical events it's actually performing the alerts scenarios and also the recovery phase, uh, reporting and analysis phase after such events. So it supports advanced functionality beyond the alerting uh, functionality, with, including situational awareness uh, and two-way engagements as some examples. And also, uh, as we saw in the previous slide, it has full support for multi-channel uh, alerting. So along with cell broadcast and location-based SMS channels, we support every other, uh, any other uh, alerting channels such as voice-based alerting, address-based alerting, group-based uh, sirens, uh, also from uh, the CAP interface. So we have both CAP in and the CAP out capabilities in the platform and, and many other channels, including social media, etc. 
uh, we support uh, different delivery models. We can deliver this on-prem with the government authorities. We can host this uh, nationally within borders, or we can even uh, support this, uh, provide this as a software as a service solution. Um, when it comes to the uh, telecom technologies, I will speak about them uh, shortly. Uh, and then uh, also just mention that our solution is based on the telecom channels and the mobile channels. So it doesn't require any installation of apps or configuration of handsets or any opt-in uh, concepts, etc. cetera. Uh, our public warning system is uh, intended to be deployed and be reachable for all citizens uh, within the country using the, the, the key uh, alerting channels. So, uh, when it comes to uh, cell broadcast as, as one of the main uh, alerting channels, we have a separate session on this tomorrow um, where my colleague Manuel Cornelis will dive into more details around uh, cell broadcast. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, by um, include the inclusion of one too many within the Everbridge uh, team and family, we now have uh, a fully fledged sort of cell broadcast support within our platform. And cell broadcast, uh, sorry, uh, one too many is by far the, has been the leading vendor of cell broadcast uh, over the last 20 years with more than 85 installations and more than 30 uh, countries deployed. And we are, we are installed in every part of the world. Um, and we have also been heavily involved in standardization work and specification work uh, in, in cell broadcast over the years. But again, Manuel will dive further into this tomorrow. Sorry. Uh, the next uh, one to mention is location-based SMS. Uh, Everbridge was actually the world's first um, vendor to deploy a location-based system uh, for uh, actually covering the whole population in Norway back in 2009. Uh, it's still the only vendor that delivers a complete uh, national public warning system end-to-end based on location-based SMS. And we have unparalleled technology within this area where we have, uh, over the years, developed robust support for using SMS as a main channel for alerting, uh, combined with location information, where we take care of privacy concerns, and we also handle the robustness and scalability of the system. Uh, since this is using conventional SMS, there are several measures you have to take in order for this to be a reliable and stable solution. And also, we have uh, integrated cell broadcast and location-based SMS to become a hybrid solution where we can utilize uh, the power of both these technologies in orchestration. And with that, we also have a powerful, uh, what we call life cycle management, where we can also engage with um, the population during uh, an event or and even after an event by using the location-based SMS technology. So summarized, uh, looking at our offering from uh, cell broadcast and location-based SMS and how we combine these technologies, addition, in addition to all the multi-channel support we offer, we are able to offer some unique capabilities when it comes to uh, public warning systems. We ensure the speed and reliability of, uh, of alerting uh, through the cell broadcast technology, where we also have the, the ringtone uh, sort of alerting um, capabilities. We reach out to a large portion of the, uh, of, of the population through a mature deployment of cell broadcast, but also in combination with location-based SMS. We support more advanced scenarios like two-way engagement, um, and uh, concepts of follow-up where we can send alerts also to the population after an incident and even after people have left a certain alerting area through the capabilities of the location-based part. And we support multi-language, uh, we support alerting inbound roamers and also uh, citizen traveling abroad and these type of scenarios. Uh, why choose uh, Everbridge as the uh, provider of location, uh, sorry, of uh, pu public warning systems? Uh, as I mentioned, we are the proven vendor. We have uh, an unbeaten track record of deployments worldwide. Uh, we have a technology that is built 
and engineered so it's supported in within Europe. We have all the technology within our platform. Uh, we have no external uh, dependencies and we are fully compliant uh, on the EU directive. Uh, just want to finish off just showing uh, some of our footprint when it comes to national public warning deployments. As I mentioned, we have more than 10 deployments of national systems in public warning, and this is quite unique. And we have uh, several deployments where uh, countries are using location-based SMS alerting as their only channel, and vice versa, also cell broadcast. And we have customers using these systems for uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And we've seen a tremendous use of these systems during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So with that, I will round up and uh, hand back to, uh, to you, uh, uh, Tivana. Great. Thank you very much, Knut, for the presentation of Everbridge. We will now move to um, the second speaker of the first block, who will be presenting a Celtic company. Ronan, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you very much, Cassia. We see you well, we hear you well, and the presentation is on. You're ready to go. Perfect, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juan and Daniel, and I'm the CEO of Celtic. Uh, I'd like to dedicate my 10 minutes in order to introduce Celtic to those of you who are not familiar with us yet, and also to give you a short description of our magazine suite of products with which we can help governments and mobile operators to establish a public warning system that is based on either cell broadcast or location-based SMS. Uh, Celtic has been around for the last 20 years as the global leader of public warning systems and uh, telecom products. With more than 70 mobile operators adopting our cell broadcast based products, I can say for sure that we are the world's largest uh, cell broadcast provider and I'm keen to uh, hear uh, in probably in Manuel's presentation who are the 85 operators in the 32 countries in which uh, Everbridge one uh, support system is, is deployed. Uh, our customer base spreads across 25 countries and includes tier one mobile operators as well as governments. The broadcast messages that are sent uh, from our systems reach out to 300 million uh, people. Uh, we are headquartered in Israel and we have a presence in 12 countries worldwide. Um, for the sake of the public warning uh, system, I'd like to introduce our MAGEN uh, suite of products. Uh, MAGEN stands for Mass Alert Geo Emergency Notifications, and also uh, it means in Hebrew a uh, shield. That's why we like the name. Uh, yeah, the suite includes uh, the MAGEN CBC and the MAGEN location-based SMS, which are aimed at mobile operators. And uh, the CBE, we call it Command Post, which is uh, used by government and agencies uh, for the alert creation and management. Um, the MAGEN suite of products also includes um, a native uh, emergency alerting app, that works for uh, both uh, iOS and Android. And also a very unique uh, offering uh, from us. Uh, this is a SIM alert, which means that in this case, uh, the messages are received by the SIM card uh, from the command post with no integration at all with the mobile network. So the suites work as a whole, uh, the command post uh, delivers uh, or disseminates uh, alerts to all the uh, all the product of the suits, and obviously the uh, interface between the different products is a standard. Uh, the CBE communicates with the CBC using CAP, so it means that the CBE can communicate with any other CBC over CAP, and our CBC can work with any other. CVE on the same interface. Same work for the location-based SMS uh, and, and the rest of the products. Uh, I, I'd like to focus on uh, the CVC and the command post because these are the most uh, relevant products for 
uh, the EU alert which uh, the entire Europe uh, is focusing on now. Uh, so our CBC works obviously on all networks, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G will be ready in Q1 uh, next year. Uh, we work with all the RAN vendors, the, the more popular ones like Ericsson, Huawei, Nokia, uh, ZTE, and even to the, uh, I would say, the more established ones like Siemens, the old Motorola's, whatever RAN controller you have, we can connect. Uh, we communicate with the CD over CAP, I already said that, we support all standards, multilingual languages, multi-languages, uh, multi uh, all emergency frameworks, EU alerts, CMAS, and our uh, cell water centers around the world disseminate uh, around 1,000 cell water messages per day. You can see our customer uh, base spread on a map. This is our CBC customers. Uh, you can see some uh, tier one operators, like the largest uh, operators in India, for instance, Vodafone Idea, with 450 million subscribers and 400,000, sorry, 4,000 uh, run controllers. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, an average mobile operator in Europe has probably 30 or 40 run controllers max. Uh, so we are connected to thousands of one controllers. We work uh, in Russia across 11 different time zones. Uh, we broadcast in Israel in uh, four different languages. Uh, so, uh, and, and also uh, we have sold our CDC to a few governments like uh, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, and the government of Andhra Pradesh in India. On the command post. Uh, so, yeah, I called it a CBE, but as I said, it's a very powerful system that uh, is aimed uh, to work in emergency situations. So it has been designed for a very quick and rapid operation. So this includes uh, a very friendly, state-of-the-art uh, user interface, uh, a predefined libraries of alerts, uh, predefined areas, of course, you can draw uh, a polygon or a circle on a map and, and uh, like in any other system, but when a real emergency happens, you don't have time to play with a map. Everything has to be pretty fine. Uh, this, the command post can connect to sensors, uh, could be flood sensors or tsunami sensors, uh, or in, even to uh, Iron Dome, in our case in Israel, to uh, detect a missile uh, launch. Uh, with all the above, uh, our command post can work very quickly, as I said, in a manual operation, but also in an automatic operation. So just to give you an example, if uh, a flood detector is activated, then the uh, uh, predefined message for that case is selected. Uh, the area to which uh, uh, the target area that is vulnerable for floods is also uh, selected. And the message uh, hits the screen of the mobile device in uh, a few seconds after uh, the, the, the flood detector has been activated. Uh, of course, in uh, places which the policy requires uh, uh, human intervention, then everything is being prepared in the background and the supervisor just need to uh, press a key and disseminate the message to uh, all the uh, uh, connected channels. Uh, just to give a screenshot of how it looks like, uh, then as I said, uh, all the, uh, all the components of the magazine system have been developed in Celtic in-house. So it is not a mix of match of companies that we've acquired, everything has been built here. Uh, we uh, can use uh, these polygons to disseminate messages across uh, all types of cell broadcast, email, desktop, IVR, location-based SMS, and what you cannot see in the screen are the uh, Magen app and the Magen SIM alert. Um, I think uh, it's better to stop now and to leave some uh, room for questions, if you have any.
uh, I'd be happy uh, to take them. Yes, we usually encourage the audience uh, to start asking questions. It takes sometimes a little bit of time. Um, just to remind you, your questions are not visible to everyone. Don't be shy. Ask your questions. Our speakers are there now just for you to answer um, whatever you might um, have on your mind. Um, their presentations uh, will be visible in the recording tomorrow. So far, uh, Ronan, um, I don't see any question from the audience specifically related to your presentation. If you would like uh, to continue, you still have two minutes. Sure, no, it's okay. So my uh, uh, my email uh, is displayed here and info uh, at celtic.com uh, always works. And if I can help you to compensate for the seven minutes delay in the beginning, then I'm happy to do that. Thank you. I have a question coming from the audience. Um, do you have voice and video capabilities in the product? In the app, yes, uh, and the rest of the products, no. I mean, uh, the only only way to uh, convey um, multimedia kind of content is a mobile app. Now, obviously, the disadvantage of the app is the need for the audience to download it. Uh, this can be overcome with our SIM alert when the app is based, uh, is, uh, the app resides on the SIM card, which comes this way from the factory, but uh, it will not support multimedia content. Thank you. Um, again, we see that the audience is um, possibly very happy to ask questions. Uh, we still have a small minute for another question, if there's any. I don't see it coming. So I thank you, Ronan, for your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I Ladies. make now. Uh, Arnaud, Christophe Arnaud, a presenter who will be uh, presenting uh, his company, Anthropy. Hi, hi, Christophe. Yasha, if I may, there is a, an additional question uh, for Ronan before we give the presentation mode to uh, Anthropy. Yes, Ronan, I think we yes. can. Yes, uh, the question is, what kind of CBC implementation do you provide? Centralized or decentralized? Both. So in Israel, we provide, for instance, uh, centralized, and in all other countries, uh, it is a distributed topology. It doesn't really matter. Okay, thanks for Perfect. this uh, information. So now we can uh, pass to Entropy, Kasia. Yes, thank you, Taviana. So here we are. Uh, Christoph, we see your presentation very well. Yeah, okay. Normally it's activated. Okay. You're set. That's great. All good. Okay, that's great. So, hi everyone. I'm uh, Christoph Arno. I'm representing uh, Entropy Company. I'm uh, the international officer of the company. Um, we are a um, startup uh, of uh, three years of existence and we are working on um, uh, crisis management simulation. Um, uh, we have uh, um, be, uh, we are the first company to uh, have built uh, an, in an artificial intelligence uh, which is able to have a discussion or talk between uh, one uh, call taker and the artificial intelligence. Our goal is um, of course to serve uh, our uh, civil protection system and to give the opportunity to everyone to get um, trained as close as possible to the reality. Uh, we are, um, so we are a company of 24 uh, persons. Uh, we are uh, all uh, uh, just uh, working uh, on snow protection system or, um, uh, or uh, we have worked on civil protection system. Uh, and uh, we all uh, we gathered together all the competences and all the um, the experience we had in uh, in our different works to uh, build uh, some uh, simulators. Um, the idea, as I told you, is to have the most uh, um, practical and close to the reality uh, scenarios. So we have uh, medical doctors, uh, physician experts, firefighters, sound engineers psychologists, 
and uh, of course all our IT team and trainers. Um, during that work, uh, as I told you, uh, we built an artificial intelligence that is able to uh, keep talking with someone like I'm talking to you right now. So our uh, IA is, is answering us when we ask a question as if it was a real conversation. Uh, so we made the first um, simulator that can uh, simulate uh, an emergency call. And uh, the aim is to train uh, call centers operators. Um, and uh, we, this product is already used in France since now two years uh, by fire departments and other, uh, other um, uh, organizations. Uh, the idea is to have, um, as far as possible, uh, the most uh, emerging uh, situation. So it's scenarios that it is totally uh, as close as possible to the reality. So we have by our sound engineers, we had the sounds and the voices, the real voices of people calling um, uh, um, operational cent centers. Uh, this is our first uh, um, product, is a simulator of phone calls. And building something more important, we built uh, a simulator of crisis, simul crise. Uh, that means that we are able to simulate a crisis and from local to national crisis. And we made our first crisis simulation in Marseille last year, where we simulate um, a, a terrorist attack on the uh, stadium of Marseille. And we simulated uh, from the beginning to the end with the, uh, the national uh, decision making. Um, so this is our two products that are already used uh, by civil protection uh, organizations and firefighter in France. Um, of course, during all uh, these exercises, uh, we have um, a reporting, uh, which it's called Anthroscopy, uh, which analyzes the old conversation, the old conversation uh, between the call taker and um, uh, the, the, the person who calls the uh, emergency services. Uh, that means that we are able to uh, identify if all the goals are um, done by the call taker. Uh, and when we have ended uh, our training, we can evaluate any call takers in his tr uh, training or in his course. Um, this is uh, for um, those projects are uh, typically uh, addressed to a civil protection system. Uh, of course, the third one is Simulops. It's exactly the same um, uh, simulator, but it's uh, on it's on it's an app uh, on a, um, on a phone. So uh, the firefighter uh, can be trained uh, to uh, send uh, structured messages um, when he has to uh, talk about his uh, alarm or his intervention. So he can talk to his hierarchy but the hierarchy is made by our artificial intelligence. So every firefighter in his own fire department or fire station can be trained every day uh, to uh, talk on the radio. And the two last products that we have, uh, it's um, um, the first one is uh, Gemini. Uh, Gemini is a stress analyzers in the voice. It can be used um, by face-to-face -face conversation or uh, phone um, uh, phone uh, conversation even uh, in intelligence uh, system. Um, that means that we are able to um, uh, monitor uh, the level of stress of everyone uh, taking part in the conversations. Uh, this is quite important because we can detect very early uh, the changing uh, of um, uh, behavior of, uh, of people uh, having um, a conversation. And then the last one is audioscopy. This is uh, quite finished, but it's not already used. Uh, we are still in um, uh, R&D, and uh, this is a um, um, uh, software that is able to identify any kind of noise or any kind of voice. So that means that we are able to identify a voice in um, 
I don't know, uh, in a, a train station where there is a lot of noises, we are able to identify one voice. Or we are able to identify a gun, or we are able to identify a, um, a sound. It's quite the same system that in Shazam, we are identifying all those uh, those sounds. So these two last um, products are useful in, in, in civil protection, but they can be used by uh, military or uh, intelligence um, organization. Uh, what we propose is um, three kind of uh, activities. So the first one is a training activity. This is already uh, at work. So we, we come to your place with our trainers, our psychologists, our specialists of communication, with our simulphones, our simulator. And of course, we're doing expert courses and we train all the call takers in, uh, in, the, uh, in the call centers. This is the first activity. The second one is um, license activity. So we sail so the simulator on a tablet and then you use it whenever you want with scenarios and tailed scenarios and scenarios for you, um, especially made for, for your needs. And the last one is a software activity with Gemini, as I told you just before the stress analyzer. What is important is that we do um, uh, geolocal, uh, we geolocalized the, all the scenarios, so we don't, you don't have to, uh, uh, it's scenarios that are really um, uh, existent, and that is, uh, well, yes, they are geographically uh, placed in your country or in your town, so that's really important for us. Um, our market nowadays, uh, we are uh, of course, um, uh, installing in France, our uh, main uh, facilities are in France and we're working in, in Europe or in European countries. Uh, we had last week or these two weeks uh, courses in, uh, in Switzerland, in Belgium, in Luxembourg. And um, we are now looking for traveling to travel to Spain and we have contacts in Spain and in Portugal. Uh, oh, yes, I forgot to say that our, our scenarios are um, already in French. English and Portuguese, and we're working, we can work on every uh, every language. Uh, of course, you understand that all partners are governmental organizations like fire services, emergency call centers, hospitals, airports, civil protection schools that can be public or private, army, intelligence service, and we're beginning to work with uh, SWAT teams in France. Well, this is the end of my presentation, so I'm aware of any question, if you have any. Well, it's just finishing on time, so your 10 minutes okay. slot, unfortunately, is over. Um, but okay. there were no questions so far to you, Christophe. If there are any okay. questions from the audience now to our third speaker, uh, please feel uh, free to contact him uh, after the event today. Thank you very much, Christophe, uh, for your time and the presentation today. I will be moving now to Thierry Daras from uh, OpenCode, who will be our fourth speaker today. Hello, Thierry. Okay, let's uh, start. Okay, hello everyone. I am uh, Thierry Daras from uh, OpenCode. I am uh, acting as uh, sales director for uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, this is my agenda. I will present you OpenCode in uh, two words, and then we will see two use cases uh, one for Romania. Uh, for cell broadcast and another one uh, related to location-based SMS in Thailand. Um, okay, in two words, OpenCode, we founded the company about uh, 20 years ago in 2000. Our headquarters are located in uh, Sofia in Bulgaria. Uh, we are about 160 people and uh, we have already activities uh, globally in South America, Middle East, uh, Africa, Northern Africa, Europe and uh, Asia. Um, we have, um, yeah, something I, I can say which is a little bit specific about open code is that we are coming from the, from the mobile networks. Um, so we joined this uh, public warning uh, market a few years ago. But uh, at the beginning, we were uh, working with operators, mobile operators mainly. 
and uh, this is uh, and we are still working with mobile mobile operators and this is important to say because uh, most of those technology used in uh, public warning are based on networks and uh, then we trust that uh, you must know what is a mobile network if you want to implement location based sms or cell broadcast uh, efficiently okay so as you know uh, we have three ways to uh, notify or send alerts. Uh, the first way uh, is uh, cell broadcast. Then you have also location-based SMS. And the third one uh, is uh, mobile apps, using mobile apps. Uh, okay, this is a comparison, but I guess we will have uh, no time for that. So we already deployed a few cell broadcast systems. Um, that was one question uh, previously. We can deploy centralized uh, cell broadcast where uh, one cell broadcast center will be used for several uh, MNOs, mobile operators, and you will have only uh, government agencies connected to this uh, single cell broadcast. And, um, and then you, you will be able using one single system to broadcast uh, to the whole network. We have also distributed um, topologies where you will have one cell broadcast per uh, mobile operator. Uh, and then the central CBE, which is uh, the tool with the screens uh, used to send the alerts. Uh, those are use cases. Um, as you can see, we already deployed centralized system in Romania, in Ecuador. South America, and then we are already also deployed the distributed systems in uh, UAE, UAE, in Emirates, and in Hong Kong. So we will uh, focus first on Romania. Um, as you can see, I, I don't know if you see my mouth, but uh, this is a centralized cell broadcast system uh, acting with a geo redundant uh, second site. So we have one centralized uh, cell broadcast with uh, this uh, geo-redundant site. And on, on the right, we are connected to the four mobile operators in, uh, in Romania. Then we have this uh, CBE, which is used, uh, you know, that this is the tool where you have the screens and where you can define the polygons and the areas where to send the alarms. And on the left, we have the government agencies uh, we deployed this uh, system about two years ago, and uh, currently in Romania they are using it uh, quite a lot. About, I would say, 10, 10 times a month uh, currently. We have uh, another um, reference, uh, which is location-based SMS. Uh, so you know that uh, for SMS, you have to connect to the core network and you have to collect all the location of the subscribers and you have to host the database. So this is what we are doing in Thailand. So uh, we are connected to the radio network of uh, the operator. And then we uh, build a database and using this database, we host the location of the, of the subscribers and SASEN location and so on. And uh, when the, the operator, uh, have to send an alarm. Uh, they, they can see the density of the of the subscribers, and they, they can select the polygon, and then send this alarm to the to the subscribers. Okay, uh, we discussed already cell broadcast and location based SMS. Uh, currently, we have an extension of the system. Uh, the system is no more a cell broadcast or a cell uh, or a location based uh, system. SMS system, the, 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 the system can be expanded and can be used with any kind of uh, other media. So on the top, we can connect uh, using cell broadcast on the, on the, on the mobile networks. Uh, second, we can send SMS uh, to the subscribers using standard SMS. Uh, you, we can also have interfaces with uh, radio, TV, and uh, mobile app channels. We can use um, social networks. We can connect to screens or public, any kind of uh, public digital screens. And at the end, we can also connect and expand using uh, sirens.
So just uh, to conclude, I will be very short. Uh, why uh, open code or why not uh, open code? We have deployed uh, this Aero alert in Romania, which is, I guess, the biggest uh, cell broadcast implementation in Europe. Uh, this is a nice uh, reference and you, you can visit a lot of operators and uh, governments already visited uh, Romania for that. We have uh, centralized and decentralized uh, references as I show you. Um, we have our technology. So as I told you, we are coming from the mobile networks so we can uh, do any kind of implementation or optimization, especially using SMS, uh, related to SMS or cell broadcast in the network. So we can discuss with uh, mobile operators and find ways to optimize and to connect to any kind of uh, systems. We already integrated with uh, Ericsson, Huawei, uh, or any kind of uh, generation or any kind of uh, vendor. And uh, we are a totally independent, uh, debt-free uh, private company. If you have uh, further questions, you will have my contacts here. Thank you, Thierry. I think we still have one minute uh, or... Or something two. like this or two are you checking <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I, I, um, <laughs> very good no because i would like um the audience to feel free to ask questions and um sure. i know that sometimes they arrive at the end of the presentation i just um, posted a message to everyone that you know before the end it's good moment to ask questions i don't see any for the moment so i there is one we... Kasia that just arrived yeah. yes so the question is any location-based sms reference in europe uh not in europe not yet can is there you maybe any say there are a few yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> you can uh, say something about your projects is it um, planned for europe or not really yet uh, no, in, in Europe we have a lot of contacts, uh, either for a broadcast or location-based SMS. But, uh, I cannot, I cannot tell you more at this uh, stage. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Taviana. Any other question, or we move forward? I think it's uh, yes. No more questions. No more questions. We can go we to are... the next speaker. Yeah. Great on time. We're going to move um, to the last company before the break. Um, after this, we will have a short break. Stay with us. So now we will give the floor to Luca Bergonzi from Beta 80. Luca, the floor is yours. Okay, so let's start with our own presentation. Um, uh, my name is Luca Bergonzi. I am a, the sales executive of the emergency management division in Beta 80, specifically dedicated to the um, international business development. Um, maybe some people already know about Beta 80, but it's always good to remember some numbers of our company before we go in the details. Beta 80 was founded in 1986 and the emergency management division officially started its job in 1992, just six years um, after the foundation. Uh, last year's revenue said we got, we had a 50 million euros revenue with an increase of 11%, which is absolutely not bad considering the times we're living in. And of this 50 million, the emergency management division um, is about 12, 12, 13. We are currently uh, 600 more or less 600 people working in beta 80 so we by european let's say standards we could be considered a large enterprise so not not more a small or medium enterprise most of us are based in milan italy but we also have offices around italy like other five offices in the country plus one in the united states and another one in switzerland so not a multinational company but still <clears throat> quite good uh, we currently serve seven countries with our public safety solutions. This is not a huge number, but at the same time, it's a great number for companies who are not necessarily corporations or multinational like us. And of these, we, in these countries, we have installed up to 74 different PSAPs. So 74 different PSAPs run with our uh, platforms, including 
112, ambulance services, fire brigades, even including Coast Guard and an airport. Um, we cover around 38 million people with our PSAPs and we manage more or less 20 million emergency calls per year. But the number which I care more, uh, for which I care most, uh, is the last one. And that's the 100% customer retention rate. It means that since 1992, when we started activities, all the customers we got in time never left Beta 80. That's because our level of service probably is perceived as top level. Otherwise, the customer would like to change, right? So that's our, I would say, uh, diamond or jewel of the crown. Um, but what do we do? So for those who don't know Beta 80 yet, <clears throat> Beta 80 used to be known for being a CAD company, computer-aided dispatch software de deployment. Today, uh, Beta 80 grew in, grew in time, so we can say that we are a full stop shop for a PSAP, not just computer-aided dispatch and its mobile version, <clears throat> which is used for uh, vehicles. We also have our own uh, internal made uh, GIS platform, and we cover all the existing potential ways of geolocating uh, emergency calls, including delivering AML solutions. We have an e-call modem and e-call platform. And finally, the HTML5-based geolocation system, which is without applications installed on the phone, used to geolocate uh, calls. So <clears throat> this is the first uh, very important uh, thing to remember for 2020 our range of solution increased a lot, but the protagonist of 2020, even this year, was anyway the CAD. As you know, we live in a very special situation and we are all under stress. Italy and Lombardy at the beginning of the <coughs> COVID outbreak was one of the heavily hit regions, the first probably in Europe and then all the others followed. And our CAD was very much put under stress. Uh, we are, um, proud to say that the answer of our CAD was amazing. In the matter of a few days, while the emergency services were reorganizing themselves, we could track and pick up all the changes they needed in time without uh, losing any precious moment. So you could say that this is one of the most uh, COVID tested CADs you can find in the world. Also to uh, represent uh, the a rapid response that we could give to the needs of our customers. All the things I'm telling you are not just coming from me. They are actually being <clears throat> put in paper by interviewing our customers in 112 Lombardy in a test, in a, sorry, in a use case published by INA not long ago that you can find with this uh, front page on the link you see below. So the CAD is a protagonist. What What's next? So because today, this year was actually a, a year of great surprises. So, uh, like I said, Beta 80 is famous now for this set of, uh, for this range of products, but there is more. We went <coughs> ahead and we are currently able to provide from 2020 a real next generation 112 platform. This is nothing about the CAD. We went completely into a new <coughs> environment and what we can provide is a complete ESI net architecture. For those who don't know these uh, terms, uh, uh, maybe we don't have enough time to explain all of them. I just tell you, follow my LinkedIn profile. You will see that we are currently having webinars dedicated to what is NG112 and why a piece of should install it right now. But the elements of the ASI net that we manufacture are those co uh, that you see there in bold, uh, ESRP, ECRF, and LIS, all based on ETSI-TS technical specifications, right? So we are not inventing here anything. We're not reinventing the wheel. We are based upon technical specifications. That all, that's all a standard. If you install these things uh, into your NG112 network, you are uh, sure to be on spot, on standard. That was also, uh, um, defined in a, in a project. Last year, INA launched a, a set of NG112 pilot projects. We have one of them called Celeste, cross-border resonate and lost emergency service testing. You can find the document at this, um, uh, this link. So if you're interested, take a read of this particular part and let me know what you think. Like I mentioned before, webinars. So 
Unfortunately, this year we had no possibility of meeting altogether at the INA, usual INA conference, and we also went uh, uh, remotely, no? tried to get remotely to our uh, friends, to our customers, and so on. And the idea is that we organized uh, a set of three webinars, all dedicated to NG112. Uh, two of them have, have already been made. The third one is on the 28th of September, uh, of October, so in a couple of days. Um, and they are all based upon different topics on NG112. We believe that this is the most important topic to be discussed right now in the emergency uh, management uh, uh, community because it's something that is going to come sooner or later for every country. So it's better that we are all prepared to know what's going on. Um, if you're interested, like I said, please get in touch with me. You can find me on email or you can find me on my phone number. Uh, you can follow my LinkedIn profile to get the news about the webinars. And if you are interested on the third webinar in particular, you can register at the address you see here. It's quite uh, short to, <clears throat> to write down if you can. Uh, please consider that all registered uh, members will also receive the previous webinars uh, on uh, <clears throat> recorded format. So you can actually look at all of them. You didn't lose anything if you didn't participate before. So that's it. This is the overview of our company. And I would like, uh, if there are, uh, to leave you uh, the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luca. Um, I'm opening now for one or two minutes um, the floor for questions. Um, I'm looking now at the questions chat in hope that there will be some questions for our last speaker of this block. Um, if not, uh, we will move uh, to a short break. Please feel free now to ask your questions to Luca. No, Luca, I don't have any questions. So I thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kasia.